Hello and welcome to some WAN 2.2 video goodness. I've been busy updating last week's workflow, which was for the previous version, WAN 2.1, and whoa, let's just say I wasn't expecting them to pull an SDXL refiner and give us two models for 14B. That means this week I'll be going over two workflows for you, one for the 5B model and then one for the 14B models. The videos at the moment are from the 5B model as the quality seems decent with the only downside being it's not quite as good at following the prompt. If you're looking to build this workflow for yourself, I will be going over all the sections, but you may wish to start with last week's video on WAN 2.1 to see how things have changed. Or if you'd prefer the ready-made workflows, then my incredible Patreons get those for helping to support the channel and allowing me to keep creating these videos and more workflows for you. Starting with the 5B model first, this one is likely to be the best for most people, perhaps even if you do have a lot of VRAM. The 5B model will fit nicely into most consumer cards, and you've got Block Swap 2 if you're really, really low on VRAM and perhaps just have 8 gig. As for the quality versus performance, I'd say it's pretty decent, even versus 14B. I'm using what I call the rodent method for workflows, really ordinary divisions easily networked together. So everything goes in boxes that can be moved around easily without too much spaghetti everywhere. One quick note to start with here was I noticed sometimes 24 FPS would be better and sometimes 16 FPS would be better. You'll soon be able to see why testing took quite a while here as there's loads of notes everywhere. First up of course are the LoRa's which we used last week to speed up video generation. I'm not using these for the 5B model, hence they're bypassed, but you can of course pick any LoRa you like if it works with 5B. The T5 and WAN model loader is next also the same as last week, though this time I'm using the WAN 2.2 VAE, again from Kijai's files. I've got the video block swap bypassed, but if you want to enable it just press Ctrl B and that will help to reduce VRAM. For the prompting, I've included a little guide for you to think about when you're writing your prompts called the camera method. As you can see there, camera, C-A-M-E-R-A, -E nice and easy to remember, even for someone as rodent-brained as me. I've also written down various examples for things to try in each category, though the actual effectiveness of all the things is slightly limited in 5B compared to 14B. Essentially, pick your scene, framing and simple camera movement such as a pan or tilt. Describe the things in the scene and what they're doing, the movement style you intend such as action or graceful, and any environmental objects such as trees. Also include the style as well and any lighting or colours you'd like. The prompt node is as before too, with positive at the top and negative at the bottom. Here I'm asking for a sort of rat-faced magic user, a tall order I know, but hey, I'd like to see what the models can do. I've now also added some experimental options as I found they could help just a tiny bit. The cache I haven't actually used yet because I'd like to get the quality up before trying to make things go fast, but it's there as an option to maybe speed things up once you're happy with the quality and are looking to tweak things. Skip layer guidance and the experimental args are also available in native Comfy UI, but typically as individual nodes, whereas here, this one has options for both Zero Star and Fresca. Fresca I typically leave off, but it can be useful if you're making anime style videos. With the basics out of the way, then text to video is first. And um, yes, that's not too bad. She's sort of got the rat face, that's nice. But I did have to increase the shift value for this. Let's take a look at some of these settings a bit closer. Now the WAN video empty embeds also a strange one because I had to change the size on that 1280 by 704. 720 tends to give errors, which is kind of strange. Here we've got the new arguments as well. So there we've got the skip layer guidance and the experimental args. Uh, lots of notes. Here we are. We've got some timings for you there. So this took about six minutes and 21 seconds uh, for that. And also very important, 
is that the lower resolutions, like with WAN 2.1, which we did last week, I started out on 480p and they were just blurry and terrible. So don't do the low resolution ones, do the 720p and you'll find they're a lot better. So I tried 720, like I mentioned before, and if you're getting the same error as me, the size of a tensor is something but must be something else, then it's probably the size. With regards to the sampler settings, a CFG of three is generally okay. If you go too much higher, it will start to burn. The shift value is interesting, um, lower than three, and it tends to not do that much detail. Um, but above nine is what I needed here to actually get the prompt having the rodent features rather than human features. So a higher shift allowed it to change more away from human faces. For scheduler options, DPM++ SDE is pretty good, though you could also go for LCM as well. And finally for this section, just a quick zoom on the video there. We can see she's uh, psychically creating lots of cheese, although the red, green and blue cheese I'm not sure would taste very nice. Image to video now, and again much the same as last week, apart from the increased resolution and extra options again. Similar speeds to text to video on this 121 frame test, uh, this time taking around six and a half minutes. Also shows that it does vertical videos quite nicely. So there we go, there's a psychic power, and she's creating the cheese, yes, mmm. What colour cheese have we got this time? Mostly the right coloured cheese. So that's a bit better with the image to video. It's probably worth noting as well that Kijai's nodes get updated a lot, which happened during my testing. So it started out some samplers didn't necessarily work, whereas others did. For this one, I'm using DPM++ SDE Beta, which I think is good for image to video, but that may change in the future. On to video to video then, and I've added one tiny extra tweak here, which is the FPS option, because like I say, sometimes you get 24, sometimes you get 16. This particular video is 16 FPS going in, and I don't want to have to change it in two places because I'm lazy. So there, I just set FPS, which I can use later here with get FPS. Again, a limited number of samplers work here with DPM++ SDE Beta being my preferred choice. The denoise strength is fairly similar to before with most change happening above 0.85 like I have here with 0.88. Oh, also worth noting that when you use that resize node and you've got the divisible by 32, when you put in 720 it changes it to 704, which does seem to work better. So if you're having problems with particular numbers not working and giving those errors, try the divisible by 32 trick. The resulting video in this case is fairly decent. He's got some rat faced features, but of course it was meant to be a woman. Never mind. Still, it looks all right. Okay, so that's the 5B collection of workflows. Are you ready for things to get a bit more complicated? Because with 14B, things get changed quite a bit. Hello and welcome to 14B. This time I am using some LoRa's, but instead of being chained together, it's the same LoRa, only with more strength for the first model, as 14B comes with what they call both high and low versions. We actually used these last week with 2.1 and it's the same ones here again to allow just six steps for a decent video quality, really speeding things up quite considerably. Also, to make things even more fun, there are two versions of 14B. There's a text to video and an image to video. So these LoRa's are just for the text to video loader and you'll see those in just a moment. Because of this, I've split things like the standard loaders this time to be just the T5 and VAE. Also note, for Kijai's nodes at least, I'm using the WAN 2.1 VAE, not the 2.2 that we just used in the 5B workflow. Strange, I know, but it works for me as 2.2 seems to give errors. 
I've also split out the torch compile and block swap options to be more easily shared. I've moved some experimental options as well, the ones we saw earlier with 5B, because these are all pretty much set and forget things. You likely won't be coming back to them, but even for things like my 3090, the block swap option is essential. 20 seems like a fair trade, but increase as required for lower VRAM systems. As there are two sets of two models, the first loader is for the two text to video models, which confusingly enough, also work for video to video. I'm using FP8 quantization for these as even on a 3090 with block swap, it's a hungry beast. Underneath is where the LoRa's get added with these two WAN video set block swap and set LoRa nodes. Like you can see, it's simply taking the block swap options that we had earlier and the two text to video models as inputs, then adds the LoRa's before finally getting saved as the updated model output for both high and low. The prompt is much the same as before, only the model to offload isn't connected because we've got two models now. With the basics out of the way, it's text to video again. This is slightly different to 5B in that I did try 121 frames first, but the first few frames glitched out. You know how they go all dark or bright and weird. So if that's happening to you as well, try reducing it to 81 frames and 16 FPS. Also at higher resolutions, I started to run out of VRAM and not wanting to sacrifice too much speed with the block swap already set to 20, I went with a slightly lower resolution of 1280 by 576. With these settings, the time taken was roughly the same as for 5B at around six minutes. As there are two samplers, we're using the old SDXL refiner trick, also a bit like split sigmas with six steps in total it's set to do the first three steps with the high model and then the remaining steps with the low model. Basically, the high model does most of the work with the low model adding some more details. This time, because we're using that LoRa, we've got the CFG set to one and we can also set the shift a little bit lower. So if you remember in 5B, I had to put it up above nine before the rat faced person would appear. In this case, six is actually OK. And you'll see in the video in just a moment, the scheduler again, DPM plus plus SDE seems to be the best for me, but other ones do work as well, such as LCM. As you can see with the result, this time it's done much better. So you see what I mean about the quality? It's still the same sort of quality of video as 5B, but it has followed the prompt ever so much better. We've got a proper rodent. We've got those lovely psychic mind patterns coming out and all the cheese is the right color. It's video to video time. And again, this is done with the text to video model, just to be confusing. Uh, although this time I went with LCM. Of course, the main change here is you've got to have a slightly lower denoise strength. So 0.81 is what I chose for this time. The result here with such a low denoise is very similar to the original, but of course, now the person has much better whiskers. As for the psychic cheese, is it any good? That's not too bad. Now, given the lack of VRAM on a 3090, I found I had to turn off one of the models if I wanted to use the other one. So there I've got rid of the text to video loader, and now we've just got the image to video loader options. That enables the group down here, which as you can see is almost the same as the text to video one, apart from we're using the I to V models here. Um, this time I also disabled quantization just for giggles and you'll see the speed difference in just a moment. The LoRa loader is of course exactly the same, apart from you've got the image to video models going in and the image to video models coming out. And yes, it is the same text to video LoRa going in as well. Some more changes this time for image to video because there's a slightly different node here. WAN video image to video in code. So this is using the start image. You could add an end image if you want as well, but we've got our alien character again. The divisible by 32 will change the size of it. So it's actually going in 704 by 1280. 
As for the double samplers, this time the LCM sampler was my favourite, although DPM++, SDE and SDE Beta are sort of okay as well. Now, I mentioned I wasn't using the quantization, and here is the difference on the speeds. So this time the first three steps takes five minutes, with the final three taking four minutes, so over nine minutes compared to the six minutes with the FP8 quantization. The final video is okay. Um, I guess we've got a little bit of psychic mind power going on there, but unfortunately no cheese. Overall then, a very curious mixed bag. 5B does give some great videos and works on most cards, but 14B seems to follow the prompts much better, though perhaps limited to 16 FPS and does eat a lot of VRAM. Overall, I think my suggestion would be to try both if you can, as it's the best way to find out and to have fun. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.